Welcome back to Algebra 2 Homework Help. Today we're going to be graphing quadratics by converting them into vertex form first. So we're going to be given functions that look like this in standard form. And through a process called completing the square, we're going to transform our functions from standard form into something that we're more familiar with, which is called vertex form. Now recall vertex form is neat because just by staring at the function, just by flipping the inside and keeping the outside, we can immediately identify our vertex as h comma k and graph it from there. So this is something we're familiar with, we're comfortable graphing with, and we want to get our functions into this form. So if standard form is our before, vertex form will be our after. Let's dive into this process called completing the square and see how it works. Now this is one of the few times that I'm going to ask you to not ask too many questions about how or why, just get familiar with this process of completing the square. It's very important that you're comfortable doing it every single time when asked to convert to vertex form. So if this example one here, if this is my standard form or my starting point, and it takes the form like that, well then I'm going to leave a space after my bx, which is my second term, that's this guy right here, leave a space after that, and we'll rewrite our c off to the side and put a second space afterwards. So we're going to put two spaces, one after our bx and then one after our, oops, um, after our c. In this case, I'm going to write it like this, x squared plus 8x space plus 18 space. Now to figure out what goes inside of our first space and our second space, we're going to locate our b. In this case, b is positive 8. So here we are. We're going to cut b in half or divide it by 2. So in this case, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And I want you to circle that and hold on to that number for later on, but right now we're going to square it. So we cut b in half, and then we square it. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. And that's the number that goes right here. It's positive 16. Now keep in mind, this is an equation, and an equation is in many ways like a scale. Um, if you add weight to one side, you're suddenly tipping the scale and it gets heavier on this side. To keep it balanced, what we do to one side, we must, um, we must undo it to the other side or we will undo it, okay? So in this case, I can't simply add 16x to one side of the equal sign. If I want to keep this equation balanced, I'm going to have to subtract that 16 at the same time. So if you have a look, we're adding 16 and minusing 16. So these really aren't changing our equation because they cancel each other out. But that's the clever trick of completing the square. So if you add 16, we must also minus 16 afterwards. Now is the fun part. We get to actually uh, complete the square and see what that means. So this piece right here, our ax squared, our bx, and that new number that we wrote in, we're going to turn that into a perfect square. So we're going to write x, and remember that number we circled before? That's what goes right here right now. So x plus 4 whole squared. Now we've completed this square. Out on the end though, we still have plus 18 minus 16, which reduces down to positive 2. And there you have it, we've turned our standard form up here into our vertex form in the last step. Before we move forward, I want to prove why this works. Okay, so let us take our vertex form. And down here, we're going to expand it and see if our trick really worked. So if I'm expanding x plus 4 whole squared plus 2, first I'm going to rewrite this x plus 4. Because squared, recall, means multiply it by itself. So I'm going to rewrite it twice. I'm multiplying x plus 4 by itself. Now let's do some foiling, x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16 plus 2. Combining like terms, I get x squared plus 8x plus 18. And oh my gosh, wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what we started with. So we have cleverly rewritten our standard form function into vertex form.
Let me erase all of this fun stuff. But this is our answer. Okay, it's in vertex form. So now we can easily identify that our vertex is flip the inside, negative 4, keep the outside, positive 2. And it's going to be facing up. So now it's something we can comfortably graph with. Okay, let's try that process one more time with example 2. So remember, first we need to rewrite this by leaving a space after our bx. And notice that here we don't have a c at all, so that's okay. We'll just leave a second space also, like this. Okay, and remember, the reason I have two spaces is because whatever I add or subtract here, I'm going to undo it right over here. So we need to figure out what goes in those spaces. Well, remember the process goes like this. You locate your b, which is negative 6. We're going to divide it by 2. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. We're going to circle and hold on to that for later, but right now we're going to square it. Now negative 3 squared gives us positive 9. So that's what goes here. We can't simply add 9 out of nowhere. We have to also balance our equation by subtracting 9 on the same side. So now we're ready. We're going to complete this square. So our next step, to turn that into a perfect square, that's where this number uh, plays its role. So x minus 3 whole squared. And again, notice that if I were, oh, minus 9 at the end. That's this guy. Now notice if I were to expand that out, x minus 3 times x minus 3, I would indeed get x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9, which is x squared minus 6x plus 9, which is that guy right there. So we completed the square successfully. So, believe it or not, we finished already. Done. Donezo. Termina terminábamos. Okay, we have finished. Um, so our vertex in this case would be positive 3, negative 9, and it's facing up again. Positive 3, negative 9, and it's facing up. So now let's actually get into the homework uh, problems now that we see the process. Woo! All right, example number 2. We're going to apply our same process as before. h of x equals x squared plus 10x. Leave a space. Leave a space. Now, what goes here, you might ask? Oh, we're going to find our b value. Cut it in half and square it. That's what goes right there. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. Hold on to the 5, but square it. It's 25. That's what I get to add here. And, ooh, I've just made a very critical mistake, a common mistake. So see if you can find out what mistake I just made. If you said, hey, you added 25, and then instead of undoing it by subtraction, you added it again, and that's wrong, Ms. Name, you would be correct. That should be a minus 25, so that we keep our equation balanced. So that plus 25 minus 25 is actually uh, taking care of itself. Now we're going to complete our square, and instead of guessing as to how that square is completed, we know that this number gets filled in right here. All right, and then plus 15 minus 25 is minus 10. Ta-da! So this is our uh, vertex form, so h of x equals. So our vertex is going to be flip the inside, keep the outside, negative 5, negative 10, something like that. And it's facing up. So I don't know exactly how wide or narrow it is. It could look like this. It could look like this. So we need some extra points for precision so we can get a precise graph. Well, that's where all this stuff comes in. So let's rewrite our function, which was x plus 5 whole squared minus 10. We identified our vertex as negative 5, negative 10. And now we'll find the y-intercept. So make a note to yourself, if you forgot, to find the y-intercept, we're always setting the x equal to 0. So basically, when x is 0, it's not to the left, it's not to the right, it's right here. We want to see how high 
or how low our graph is when it's intersecting the y-axis. So let's set it x equal to 0 and carefully solve. So h of 0 equals 0 plus 5, so I'm just plugging 0 for x, whole squared minus 10. Well, remember we're going to work inside the parentheses first. So 0 plus 5 is 5 squared minus 10. Next we're going to use the exponent, so that's 25 minus 10. And then finally, we'll add and subtract. That gives me 15. So remember, we're reporting a point here. A y-intercept is a point. Our y value was 15. And remember, our x value, that's what we had set x equal to in the very beginning. Our x value was equal to 0. And so our point, whoops, must be reported as, darn. Okay, our point must be reported as 0, 15. That's way up here. Now we can draw a nice precise graph. We need to make sure it goes through this point, and we want to make it as symmetrical as possible, and that looks like a pretty good uh, parabola to me. Now the direction of our opening basically depends on the sign out in front. Since there's nothing, that means it's a positive, so our direction of our opening is up. Our axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex, and that's the line x equals negative 5. It's always that number right there. Remember, it's going to be x equals h, where h is the first part of my vertex, h comma k. So in this case, x equals negative 5. That would be my axis of symmetry. Now have a look at our graph. It's facing up. That makes our vertex not the max, but the minimum. Remember, whenever we talk about max or min, we're really talking about the vertex of the graph. So this would be a min. Okay, our domain. So our domain, let's focus from left to right. Our graph exists all the way for all negative x values. You can tell because there's an arrow pointing to the left. I know it looks like it's pointing up, but it's also going to the left forever. And then our graph, based on this arrow right here, is also going forever, covering all those positive x values. Our domain is negative infinity comma infinity. And let me just um, give you a little spoiler alert here. All parabolas, um, or rather all upwards and downwards facing parabolas that look like this, or this, will always have domains of negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, our range is what we have to be careful for because our range is our y values. So if domain's x values, domain, then range is the y values. And this graph does not exist for all y values. Notice it does not exist down here. It doesn't begin existing until this point. And that y value, for precision, I'm going to look at what I calculated my vertex to be. It begins at negative 10. That's the lowest it goes. Remember, it has a minimum. So our range is going to be from negative 10, and then it, can, it does exist forever upwards after that, till infinity. And there we have it. That was problem number two. Okay, let's do another one. Problem three. This one's a little trickier. And the reason I say that is because there's a number out in front. Anytime there's a number out in front, you want to like give yourself a warning. Okay. Watch out, it's going to be tricky later, so I don't want you to rush through it at all. But I'll show you right now how the process works. So as before, we'll rewrite our function, leaving a space after the b, and a space after that last number there, or our c value. Now here's what makes this different from before. We cannot do completing the square when there's a number in front of our x squared. Basically when there is an a value that isn't simply um, 1. So if there was something like this, I'd have to get rid of the 5. Even if there was something as simple as this, I'd have to get rid of the negative 1. So here's what I mean by get rid of. We're not just going to really make it disappear. We're going to factor it out. So we're going to rewrite our function by factoring out a 3 from these first two terms. 
by factoring out the 3, I'm left with x squared plus 2x. And we leave our space inside of the parentheses. Please, please, please make sure that your space is inside the parentheses. And the rest goes outside. Cool. Next, we need to know what fills in here. Well, as before, we're going to find, now we're not focused on the b value from our original equation, but rather the b value that results after we factored out the 3. So we're focused here. Pretend like that 3 doesn't exist for now. Okay. So we're going to cut that 2 in half. Whoops. Cut the 2 in half, or divide it by 2. That gives me 1. We'll circle that 1. Hold on to it for later. We're going to square it. Okay, well, 1 squared is 1, and that's the number that goes in here, plus 1. Now, you may be tempted to go ahead and write minus 1, but that would be incorrect. This is when I said that that um, number in front, the 3, plays a little bit of a tricky role for us. So watch what we, what's really happened. So in this case, I didn't just add 1 to this side of the equation, but notice that because it's inside the parentheses with that 3 out in front, that we've really, when we distribute in the 3, we've really actually added 3 to this side of the equation. And so in order to undo that, we have to be really careful. Keep in mind that there's a 3 out in front, so 3 times 1 is positive 3. So to undo that, I need to minus 3. That's the tricky part. You have to remember to distribute in, whoops, to distribute in that number out in front, and that's how much you really have to balance. So when we added the 1, we actually really added 3 to this side, and so as a result, we've got a minus 3. Okay, well, we're almost done. We're going to complete the square now. This is the stuff we'll be completing. So let's write it together. g of x equals 3 something something squared. Now what goes in here? Always an x and then that number that we circled from earlier. Now we just got to simplify the outside. Well, 1 minus 3 is negative 2 and there you have it. We are in our beloved vertex form. Let's copy it over onto the right so that we can start answering these questions. We've got 3 x plus 1 squared and then it was minus 2. Okay. So from the equation that we've come up with, our vertex is going to be flip the inside number, keep the outside number, that's our vertex. The y-intercept, as always, we have to set x equal to 0. So let's show the work. g of 0 equals 3. Let's plug in 0 for our x value. Let's make 0 plus 1 squared minus 2. And all we got to do now is simplify it. So work inside the parentheses first. 0 plus 1 is 1. Next, we're going to take care of our exponent. 1 squared is 1. And now we can multiply. That's 3 minus 2. And 3 minus 2 is 1. But our answer is not just 1. It, this, our y-intercept is a point. It's a point along our y-axis, and that point is 0, comma 1. So I'm going to put a point right there at 0, 1. That's my y-intercept. Let's go ahead and graph our vertex. It was at negative 1, negative 2, and that's our vertex. So at this point, we can go ahead and um, draw a smooth curve connecting these points, trying to remain as symmetrical as possible. So if I have a point there, then I'm going to go equal distance to the other side. And now I'm going to connect these. Very good. So the direction of our opening is up, and that's because that 3 out in front is positive. Our axis of symmetry is always going to be x equals the x value of my vertex. And we can verify we're a vertical line going through x equals negative 1. We have a minimum in our graph, so our vertex is the min. And our domain, as always, it's going forever to the left, forever to the right. It's going to be negative infinity, comma, infinity. 
and our range. So we're scanning from bottom to top, focusing on the Y values. Our graph does not exist yet. Oh, there it starts at the Y value of negative 2. And then it continues from negative 2 forever up till infinity. Till infinity and beyond. There we have worked out problem number 3. Okay, uno mas. So it says choose the graph, now we're on number six, choose the graph that represents f of x equals x squared minus 4x. So with a multiple choice problem like this, there are a few different strategies that we could use. Uh, one thing we could try is plotting points or plugging in x values, getting out a y value, and then seeing if that point lies on these different graphs. Let me show you a quick example of how we might do that. So let's say, okay, I want to choose the graph that represents x squared minus 4x. So let me see a point that should lie on this graph. Well, let's say we set x equal to 0. So f of 0 equals 0 squared minus 4 times 0, which is 0 minus 0, which is 0. So that means that when x is 0, our y value should be 0. That means that the point 0, 0 should lie on our graph. That means our graph goes through the origin. 0, 0 is the origin. Well, let's see. This graph does not go through the origin. It misses it. So this would not be the correct answer. We're looking for graphs that go through the origin. Okay, this one does go through the origin, so I'm not going to cross it out, but I'm not going to select it either. Let's check C. Ooh, this one also goes through the origin, so that one is a potential solution. And this one looks like it misses the origin by just a bit, so I'm going to cross that one out. So that's one strategy that you can use, um, process of elimination. And you could try other points too, and you would eventually narrow it down to just one answer. But that's just a test-taking strategy. Um, I want to try practicing our skill that we learned called completing the square. Um, let's get this from the standard form into vertex form and then select our answer. So I've got this in standard form right now. In order to get it into vertex form, we're going to complete the square. And here's how we do that. We'll rewrite our function, leaving a space. And then since there's no number here at the end, we'll just leave another space directly afterwards. To complete the square, we're going to take our b value, cut it in half. That gives me negative 2. We're going to hold on to that number for later. But right now we need to square it. So negative 2 squared, or negative 2 times negative 2 gives me positive 4. And that's the number that goes here. Now if I add 4 to one side to keep my equation balanced, I've got to minus 4 also. And now I'm going to focus right here. I'm going to complete that square. So that equals x something squared. What goes here? That's this number we circled. And now we just took care of this expression, and we just have a minus 4 on the outside. There we go. We're in vertex form. So from this form, let's see if we can figure out which graph matches. Well, our vertex is positive 2, negative 4. I flipped the inside, I kept the outside. So which one of these graphs matches? Well, let's see. Positive 2, negative 4. Okay, so it lies on this graph, but it's not the vertex. My vertex is off. This is the vertex, so this doesn't count. It doesn't have a vertex at negative 2, negative 4. That would be this point. We're going to cross it out. Now, remember from before, we had already crossed out that choice. So we can be pretty confident about this. Let's look here. I need a vertex at positive 2, negative 4. This one has a vertex of negative 2, positive 4. That's incorrect. I need it to be down here. So I'm going to cross that guy out as well. Let's see, this one has a vertex of positive 2 and negative 4. So that works. That checks out. I'm going to hold on to this. And let's see this guy. Positive 2, 
negative 4. Ooh, he misses it by just a hair. This guy has a vertex at 2, negative 5. That doesn't work for us. And also remember from earlier, it didn't go through the origin. When we had plugged in the 0, we got this point. This guy misses that point. So C, it seems, will be our answer because we verified on two fronts. Number 1, the vertex matched 2, negative 4. Also, when we plugged in a point, when we plugged in x equal to 0, we got this point that should lie on the graph. C is our answer. Satisfies both of our checks. I believe that's it for today, so I hope that helped. I wish you the best of luck in the rest of your homework.